Folks, I was recently sent an email from a customer, longtime viewer, you know, on Facebook and on YouTube. My tractor business is struggling, reaching out, trying to get some new fresh ideas on what I can do to jumpstart it. Things just aren't clicking. Now, I'm always flattered when I get emails like this. Number one, I like to answer emails like this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of in my wheelhouse of, of what I like to do and what I like to experiment with. I've been doing well, I've had businesses, both failures and successful businesses, my whole life, you know, my whole adulthood. So, um, well, about 20 years now. And I'm not gonna say I know it all, but these videos are helpful because they allow me to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and think about all those things to keep my current business moving along and growing and, and not being okay with status quo. But also they open my eyes to new things as well because a lot of you viewers out there have great suggestions, great feedback for not only the person that we're gonna discuss today and their business, but that I can implement in my own business and many of you in yours. So I'm gonna share his email with you right now and then go through the response that I gave him, which I think was nine or 10 different tips or different avenues that maybe he already knew, but maybe he could also try and he hadn't talked about. So I'm curious to see what you think about his pricing, if you have the same reaction that I do, and that may kind of paint the picture right up front, along with some other tweaks to be made. Okay, so here we go. He says, wondering if I can pick your brain for a minute. I've watched your video titled Side Hustle, How to Make Money with a Tractor, and I'm struggling my butt off to get a steady flow of work coming in. I've got plenty of attachments to do everything that comes my way, I just can't seem to get a steady flow coming. I've done paid ads, Google AdWords, Facebook paid ads, Marketplace, I've got ads on Craigslist, I've got a website that's not configured the best. I've done just about everything any other person is recommended to do with advertising. I've claimed over 150 citations, I post frequently to Facebook business pages, Instagram, and my Google business listing. I get a lot of traffic, but nothing converts into concrete phone calls. Right there, I, I just want to make a point of that. I get a lot of traffic, but nothing converts into concrete phone calls. So we'll come back to that. He continues, friends and family complain that my prices are too high, but not a single customer has ever complained. It's just how soon can I get it done? I was hoping an extra pair of eyes from someone who knows the struggle of advertising a business might see something I don't. All right, so I said there's that one point about the pricing and potentially being too high. So again, I'm keeping him anonymous, all right, but I've got his website pulled up here. And he's got a few different areas that are specifically called out. Bush hogging, post hole digging, turf installation, and renovation. So for bush hogging, brush hogging, chopping, rotary cutting, whatever you want to call it, he starts at $500 for the first acre and $150 each after that first acre. For post hole digging, it says starting at $500. For turf installation, at new home sites and yards with bare dirt, starting at $3,000. That includes seed and fertilizer, topsoil quoted separately. Similar for turf renovation. So in my mind, you know, it gets back to his point of saying he gets a ton of traffic, but it doesn't convert into calls and sales, right? He's not booking jobs. And what I think is happening is that those ads that he's running on Google and, and Facebook and, and elsewhere are driving all sorts of folks to his website to check him out. But once they see those prices, those starting points for the brush hogging, for postal digging and anything else on there, they're turned off, right? They're, they're gonna go look elsewhere. They've got the information that they want, that data point, which is a price, and I think too high of a price to start out with. And so they're gonna go bounce that off of competition and more likely than not, they're gonna tell them, hey, these people quoted me 500 bucks, what can you do it for? And I would be surprised if they're not gonna come in cheaper. All right, so I kind of led off with that in my response to him. I'm gonna take you through my response as well. and. You know, I was, well, I, I did give it some thought before I responded, but I can kind of get off on a tangent. You know, I really like to, to brainstorm and, and get creative. I'm a business owner right now. Um, I'm always trying to do something fun and different and engaging, and I'll try new things as far as advertising goes on different ways to do it and, and different approaches. And so anyway, I let off saying, you know, play around with your price structure and consider maybe not even sharing the pricing on your website. I think $500 to mow that acre of land is probably driving people away because that is just a lot of money. And I get, you wanna make sure you have all your bases covered. You have the transportation time from your house out to that job. You've got fuel costs, truck costs, insurance costs. You know, you have time here just to set up, getting everything ready to prep it, to load it, to strap it down. And same thing to reverse that process coming back. So you have to account for that additional time besides just getting out there and starting mowing. That's not when that job starts. It starts when you're thinking about it and loading up here at your place. And so I think you gotta adjust that pricing 
maybe take it off the website, do something different there. But the reason that your customers that do agree aren't complaining is because they already know the price. They've agreed to it, they saw it on your website, they called you, emailed you, whatever it is, worked out that agreement already. As long as you're doing a great job, which you wanna be doing, they shouldn't complain about the price. So that's not really helpful feedback, I don't think. If your phone's not ringing off the hook and, and booking jobs, I think that's more helpful feedback that your pricing structure's out of line. So next I told them, add value to your services, all right? You're not just going out there and brush hogging. You need to do something else that gives more bang for the buck, right? And those can be tangible or intangible things. You know, provide free consultations, you know? And, and maybe when you're out there looking at um, that field to be mowed or that yard to be done or whatever it is, give them an analysis of what you think should be done, maybe um, with a, a spraying program or fertilizer or herbicide or just a, an annual cycle that they should get into. But give them recommendations, give them, you know, quote unquote, free things that are a takeaway that make them feel like you're going above and beyond. Next up, and this one's pretty easy, but I, I looked all over his website and I didn't see it jump out to me. So are you insured and do you guarantee your work? And he did reply back and say he is insured and I expected that to be the answer, but put that out there because there's a lot of you know fly-by-night companies or just kind of real low part-timers that are not gonna carry insurance. And, and that's a big liability concern. So use that to your advantage. You're paying for the insurance. So put that in your arsenal as making you appear more professional as well. And if you are gonna guarantee your results, which you know I've done a lot of service work and I would never wanna leave a customer unhappy unless it was just some you know, this crazy situation. So I think it'd be okay, and maybe you guys disagree, but to guarantee your results, you know, that <laughs> that mowed field's gonna, gonna really be mowed when you're all done with it, or you're gonna go out there and chop down those extra blades of grass or whatever it is, you know, but I think right there that in and of itself is going to just help paint a picture that you're standing behind your work, that you're, you're willing to do what it takes to get the job done right. Now we are just moving from a neighborhood out into the country at our homestead, but, the rage, it seems like, in the last few years is for contractors that are in more metropolitan areas to incentivize neighborhoods. So basically, they'll go into a neighborhood, knock on a few doors, pass out some flyers, and they're going to give, a lot of times, just a price list that says, hey, if you get two customers to sign up for our snow removal uh, account, for instance, the price is going to be this. But if you get five of your neighbors to sign up for snow removal this year, the price is gonna be lower. And you know, 10 neighbors, it's gonna be even lower and so on and so on. And so they're going to essentially create an incentive for you to do their advertising and marketing for them as a customer. And so it depends on the kinds of services that you wanna offer because it may not all make a lot of sense. You know, not everybody's gonna have a five acre field to mow and you can't really sign up 20 people that are right in the same area. Who knows, maybe you could. But the idea is just to get those wheels churning. Maybe there's a different angle you can take with those tractor services that you're offering. And so you can go to one neighborhood or one street or you know one county road, whatever it is, and just go up and down it and say, hey, in a couple of months we can come through here and grind all your stumps or do all your leaf collection or whatever it is and sign up as many customers as possible. It's gonna be more efficient for you as the business owner because it's less travel time, less downtime in between jobs, you might not even have to put your equipment back on a trailer to haul it down to the next job. Maybe you can just drive the tractor right there. So that kind of thing could be a way for you to let your customers, in a sense, do the advertising for you, generate more business, and maybe even though that comes as a savings for those customers, the efficiency could make up for that and it could end up making you more money even. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. So something similar to those incentives we were talking about would be like a seasonal plan or maybe an a la carte menu where you can just give a whole price sheet of work that you can do to a customer and they can kind of cherry pick things and maybe the more services that they cherry pick to be done that year the cheaper the price or the you know a bigger discount they're gonna they're gonna get and you could offer a prepaid package discount that kind of thing but that's gonna lock in work for you throughout the season that you know is coming and i told him to take advantage you know he he has the turf installation you know for yard installations and renovations as well and i think you could probably lower your price point there if you can sign them up for recurring maintenance, you know, for overseeding, for aeration, for dethatching. If you have your license to do um, 
herbicides and fertilizer and everything else, add that on. But if you can build in all these additional recurring services that are gonna take place year after year and maybe month after month even, you can really start to lock in those long-term customers and you can get to a lower price point on the front end because you know you're gonna make more money on the back end. Now, everybody likes free, right? And so, oh, what's it been? A year, two years ago, something like that. My website for my business has started offering free shipping to 36 states. And I don't think that most folks are naive, right? They know that they're paying for shipping, but it's included in the price of the item. And, you know, Amazon has really shifted our economy to that kind of a pricing format. And so if you want to be competitive, I think that's really the way to do it. And it just takes the guesswork out of it, takes the extra steps out of it for customers and just simplifies the, the whole process, the whole game. Years and years ago, in one of my very first businesses, I bought and sold refurbished cell phones. You guys remember the Motorola Razor, that flip phone, that really skinny one in the early 2000s? Well, I sold just a boatload of those and I was doing that in college. I actually, it was my first million dollar sales or company that I ever created. I was selling on eBay, entirely on eBay. I would buy you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of used cell phones that are refurbished and sell them one by one to customers on eBay. And the rage at that time was selling the phone for a penny with a hundred dollar shipping cost, right? Or ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cent shipping cost. So you'd have a hundred dollar landed cost for the customer, and you know you'd sell a boatload of them. You'd have other folks that are selling the same exact way. You'd have some that are like nine ninety nine plus eighty nine dollars in shipping, or you'd have some that are a hundred bucks in free shipping. And I'd experiment with all these different formats, but you could search it by cheapest price and the one penny listings would always come up first and those always did more business than the hundred dollar item with free shipping. So really it's that landed cost you want to look at, but the whole free concept is very appealing to customers. Not just free shipping, but if you can add again, kind of that value, right? You're adding additional free things to what you're offering. And that could be, you know, it could be a, a hat, it could be a sticker, it could be a pen, it could be a referral code so that if they do recommend their neighbor, they're gonna get a discount. It could be something like, you know, if you do want to charge a higher rate for that first hour of brush hawking that you get a free second acre, or maybe the first acre is free and you're only paying for the second and beyond that, but you're just adjusting your pricing structure. But it, it, for some reason, it just, it's psychological, right? It triggers something in, in the consumer's mind where they think that they're getting something and it's making it a better value even though you're adjusting your pricing accordingly. And Chris mentioned one here too. I totally forgot about it. I just implemented it as well on my own site, but it's a rewards program, right? So if you do buy something, that could be a product or a service, you get a certain amount of points added to your account to use as basically a discount or money off on a future order. So you're kind of building in that recurring customer. You know, they wanna come back. If they're gonna save money the next time they come and then they're gonna get more rewards next time and then save money and so on and so on. You can see how that goes. You're gonna build a more loyal and repeated customer stream, which is a lot easier to have than trying to find new customers all the time. Next, I told him to maybe take a completely different angle, a completely different view of how he's trying to acquire customers and go to real estate companies that are all around you, you know, whether that's commercial or residential. Try to find an agent there or maybe a manager that you can link up with and take on those overgrown properties that they have in their portfolio. Maybe something that's been sitting on the market for a long time or maybe it's a, a repo that they have or, or shoot, even hook up with a bank. There's um, a customer I had that I sold a tractor to years and years ago. His son, just in, in Northern Indiana uh, near me, linked up with two different banks in Northern Indiana and did all of their repos. So he mowed all of their lawns, you know, all the time, all summer long. And that was his entire business was mowing those. And he had like six crews that he was doing that with. That was shortly after the great recession, you know, that we had there in 2008 when everything was going in the tank. But for him, he found the right angle and he wasn't going in the tank. He was well out of it. Now on the flip side of that, maybe it's booming with new construction. And a lot of construction companies don't handle their own grading their own kind of finish work out at job sites as well and so you could do a lot of cold calling around there or maybe you have some friends or some family that you can network with and really get hooked up with them because that's the kind of revenue stream that's potentially repeatable and recurring right because they're going to have this job and then the next job and the next one and so on and so forth and so think differently about it right go to the real estate agents go to the banks go to the construction companies it could be a good angle of work i get a phone call or an email from time to time from 
a local company, right? It could be a newspaper, it could be a radio station, could be a TV channel, where they're gonna do spotlights on local businesses. And sometimes you do need to pay for those services, but sometimes they are, it's just gonna be a, a, a goodwill gesture too. So reach out to them, let them know you're a, a good company, a local company in the area, and you wanna expand your business, talk about all the good that you're doing. It's not gonna hurt, it may not work out, maybe it's not gonna be worth the advertising money either, but it's gonna, especially in a, in a service business like that, and with tractor work that's in a local market, you wanna pound, heavily pound the advertising in that area. And the last thing, probably before you call the newspaper, the radio station, whatever it is, if you have all the different tractor attachments to get all sorts of projects done, then let folks know about it on your website. You know, I only saw four services offered there with the turf renovation, installation, post hole digging, and brush hogging. But if you have more to offer, then let your customers know about it. Build out your website, get more content on there, do blogs, right, on, on every topic that you have that's going to focus on those keywords for your local market. It's gonna help customers who come to your website understand what you can actually do, not just what you're mentioning on there, but it's gonna also give your website more authority. As you put more content, fresh content on your website, it's gonna build it up with more page counts, you know, more, potential pages to come up first in Google's rankings for your area too, you just never know. But the more you can hammer those keywords on those services that you offer in your local area, the better off you're gonna be. Alrighty folks, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up there. Hopefully I was able to help him and kind of get the wheels churning, the gears churning in your brain there and get some new angles going. And, and I hope this helps other folks out there as well. And if you have something you can add, a different angle, something that I didn't mention here something that you've done, maybe that was or wasn't successful. Let us all know and share down below. Now, if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, we sell and ship all over the country. We'd love to earn your business. Visit goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoy tractor videos, you know, talking about them, side hustling, projects at work, tag along, hit subscribe. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.